Hey guys, so um, this is a little um, unexpected, but uh, I'm with Maddie, and um, that computer that we did for her uh, that I upgraded in one of my last videos, yeah, so um, that thing's got some problems, but my neighbors are so amazing and so gracious that they're giving her um, the, uh, uh, my neighbor, Mary, um, it's her husband's mother's old iMac, so basically I'm gonna be upgrading it putting an SSD in it, restoring it, making sure everything's all set and ready to go. And then we're gonna be bringing it to Maddie. So um, we're on our way to go pick up the iMac right now. And yeah, let's go get this thing. Okay, so we have got the patient. Um, I'm gonna do a full whatever of it when I get back to my dorm. But first things first, we gotta go back to Maddie's house. I gotta grab the RAM out of her current system and the SSD. Uh, this is out of the one that I replaced in the previous video because they're gonna be transplanted into here because this one uses the same RAM and the same, it's a SATA hard drive, so it's pretty universal. So in other words, there's Maddie. So I can use her for clickbait. Um, and now we're driving back to her house so I can get these parts. And then we're back to the dorm. Okay, so we're back in my building. At this point, I've got the iMac, it's right here. We're in the elevator. Um, we're going upstairs to my room. The only thing I can think of is I don't know if I, have the right uh, bit for my screwdriver because if this is the same machine that I was repairing um, in school uh, senior year before COVID, it's got Torx and I don't think I have a Torx driver with me. So I might have to go to my parents' house to pick up my other tool set or what would suck is waiting till tomorrow to go to Walmart. Because at this point, I think Walmart, there's not an open Walmart. So let's get this inside and I'll show you guys exactly what's in the box. In terms of opening this thing up, um, pretty simple, just a normal iMac box. Inside of the box, uh, right here, this is the keyboard and mouse. It's also where I decided to put the um, extra RAM and the SSD I'm gonna be putting in it, so those are in here as well. Um, and then here's the thing itself. So I gotta grab this out of the box, one second. Just like that, we've got a 21 and a half inch iMac right here. So um, this is an older model. Um, it's got a little bit of dirt and stuff on here. It's It's been sitting for a while in terms of ports. It's got uh, four USB 2, uh, Firewire, and then mini display port, or yeah, mini display port, and then 10, 100, 1000 ethernet. But this is the computer I was doing the repairs on in school before uh, COVID happened. So I gotta tear this thing down and we're actually gonna check before I tear it down, um, if it does boot up and what the scenario is there. So let's grab the power cable and stuff. So I've got it plugged in to over there. Pardon the mess, that's my laundry to clean, so let's push the button. See if we get anything. Okay, so we got the sounds, we got the DVD drive working. It's currently firing on a mechanical hard drive, so I'm expecting it to be a little slow. Okay, an Apple logo, that's a good sign. So let's grab the keyboard, actually. Straight in, so it doesn't have an iCloud account on it right now, which is good, but it's got some documents and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I have these USB flash drives. I'm gonna put all the stuff that's on here onto one of these drives so I can give it back to Fred and Mary because I promised them I would. Um, I'm actually using the Windows keyboard and mouse that I've been using on my setup over there um, currently. So we're gonna take all of the documents and stuff off of this, throw it on a flash drive, and then I'm gonna wipe this and we're gonna see what the latest version it can install is. As a point of reference, this is currently the specs that we're dealing with right now. It's got a Core 2 Duo, it's a 2009 iMac, um, it's currently got four gigs of RAM, but it's running Yosemite, so that's honestly not a bad OS to be running on. Um, it's not connected to the internet right now, so I can't check for updates, but we're gonna wire this into internet and we're gonna see what it does. Okay, so welcome back to the part of the show where I need to see if I have a Torx bit in my car. Okay, so amazingly I lucked out. Um, I was going through my tool set in my trunk and I found a little thing with T10 bit in it and I dropped it. And I looked it up because it looks about the right size and I'm so in luck because the 2009 IMAX use a T10 bit for almost all the screws, except for the ones for the power supply and stuff, which is good because I'm not messing with the power supply. So while the data is copying off, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a, um, or how to create a bootable Mac OS flash drive. Uh, I'm gonna attempt Mojave. Um, I'm gonna create a flash drive for um, High Sierra, Sierra, and Mojave, just because I don't know if any of them will install. 
Um, so they're all the same process. I'm just gonna show you one of them because I don't wanna show you guys three of them because that would be redundant. The very first thing we gotta do is we gotta pop off this front glass panel. Uh, hopefully you guys can see in both the little thing up in the top left and in the thing. But basically we're just gonna use a flat head right on the edge until this pops off. Then it just comes out. So now what we gotta do is I'm gonna lay this down and we're gonna remove the screws. So this is actually relatively simple in terms of the screws because they're all just right along the edge of the screen of the Mac. So up top here, I'm gonna grab the torch bit out of my pocket. So we have, I yep, there's eight bolts we need to remove from the display. There's four on each side. And these bolts are here, 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 and here, right off of the edge. And here I can, okay. So we can see the, sorry if it's really bright on this side, um, I don't entirely know what's happening. So first things first, we gotta undo this bolt. Now the ones on this side are right here as I'm showing you, uh, down here, right here, and right here. So the top two are in the same positions as on the other side. Um, basically the only one that's different is this one that's right here. So at this point we can lift the display up, but, hang on, let me swap cameras real quick. So when we're lifting this up, we gotta be really careful because we have to make sure that we don't accidentally hit the power supply with our hands. So we just gotta lean it forward and then inside there are three ribbon cables that we have to take out. There's one, I don't know how well you guys can see. Okay, so you guys can see in the machine. There's one right up here on the left hand side from the power supply. There's one right here, this little one. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, there's this little one that's just right here. And it just unplugs just like that. And then there's this ribbon cable. So basically we just gotta squeeze this and it'll come out. Oh, and there it goes. So cool. And now we can just pull this off because it's just taped in place there. And the whole, oh, never mind. There's one more connector. It's over here, uh, also for the power supply. We just gotta pry it up. And it should just come right off. Oh no, we gotta squeeze it and then pull it. And the display comes right out. So now that we're inside the machine, we're gonna lie it down and we're going to swap out the hard drive first. So we're gonna grab our trusty T10 driver and we've got two screws right here and right here that we're gonna remove. Now I will not be using this bracket as far as I know on the SSD. If I do, it'll just be held in with one point because it's an SSD. It doesn't have moving parts and it's not very big. So we're gonna pop this up. We're going to we're gonna pull it outwards a little bit because it's got these mounts right in here. And just undo the SATA connector, just like that, and boom. Now we just have to remove this little wire here because this is the um, hard drive um, controller, just checking the speed. And so right here we've got the two places where we're gonna put our brand new SSD, so let me grab it. And here's the SSD, I bought this one on Amazon. Um, a while ago, it's 128 gigs. This is the same one that we put in Maddie's other system. Um, so we're just going to seriously just plug it in. And in reality, I'm not even worried about mounting it. Just like this, and it can just sit here because it's an SSD. And because it doesn't have any moving parts, it can just sit there. And there we go. Um, in terms of if you want to replace the DVD drive, that's right here. Power supply is right there. The RAM is in a different location, so I'm gonna show you guys the RAM right now. But first things first, I'm actually gonna put the display back on. So that's as easy as it came out. We're just gonna put it right back on. I'm not gonna record it because I actually don't. So that's all eight. So now we can lift this thing up and we're gonna do the RAM. This iMac, the RAM is in a very particular position. I don't know if it's like this in newer Macs because I never disassembled one, but the RAM is behind these three screws. So we're gonna unscrew them real quick. So we gotta pull on these and not be afraid that we're gonna break them. And I gotta hold this in place with my knee. Oh, and out it came. We're gonna do that with this one too. I'm just gonna pull on this tab, and out it came. So we can see these are the two sticks that are in here. They're two gig sticks. I'm gonna replace them with these. These are four gig sticks, and I'm happy because 
these are actually the right ones. I was worried they might be wrong. So um, installation is the exact opposite of removing them. I just want to line it up. Okay, so then we just have to stick it in. So I made a discovery. So in here, there's actually two slots per each of these things. So we're gonna leave the two gig sticks that are there in here as well, but we're gonna move them down. So this machine will effectively have 12 gigs of RAM in it, which should be more than enough. The all four are in here. The two black ones are the four gig sticks and the two green ones are the two gig sticks. So now we just gotta put the bracket back on, which is the same way as taking it off, so I won't record it. And then we are going to reinstall Mac OS. So now that this is done, we're just gonna put the front glass back on it, which is simple as easy. We just line it up, it's like this. And just let it go back. And then we just gotta center it a little bit and it just goes right in just like that. So now let's prepare the flash drives to do the Mac OS install. So now that we've got the computer open, um, I've got a link in the description to a OneDrive share that has the files for High Sierra all the way through Catalina. Um, I might even throw Sierra in there, I'm not sure yet. So at this point, we're gonna plug in our flash drive and I've also included in the description a link to the download for a program called Bellina Etcher, which we're going to use to create a bootable Mac OS disk. Once we open Bellina, we're going to click fi uh, flash from file, and then I saved it to desktop. Um, this is the file that's in OneDrive that I've linked in the description, and then we're going to select our target, which in my case is this 16 gigabyte Memorex flash drive. We're going to click select, and I'm just going to disable the validate write just because I want it to be done quick, and I'm going to click flash. And then it's going to pop up and we just want to click yes because that's the, do we want to allow access to this disk? And it's just gonna write. So the drive just finished the High Sierra write. So I'm gonna remove this drive and then I'm gonna do a write with Mojave and with Catalina, just so I have all three of them in front of me. Um, but we're gonna use a drive right now. We're gonna go over to the Mac and we're gonna install it. I know inevitably in the comments, someone's gonna say, oh, you could just use internet recovery. You could just use recovery mode. Uh, I'm not doing that for two reasons. One. Uh, the computer wasn't anywhere near a Ethernet jack, and so I was just relying on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi kind of sucks here, even though I've got my own network, uh, as I showed you guys in my dorm tour. However, I also don't want to sign it into the network here, since it's never going to be back here again. It's going to be at Maddie's house the whole time. That's why I did the USB installation way. Um, I'm going to have a video up at some point. I don't entirely know when on doing an internet recovery, but this is the way I did it for now. So I do know the other way exists. It's just this is the way I decided to do it. So I'm actually gonna do a quick format. I'm gonna take this back apart. I'm gonna take the drive out of it and I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna plug it into my Windows computer and I'm gonna completely wipe it so that it has no choice but to boot from the flash drive. That's the other thing I'm going to mention right now is make sure that the drive you're putting in it is properly formatted. In my case, I put it in, but I had to take the computer back apart to plug the uh, SATA drive into my Mac to format it as Mac OS extended. If you're using a brand new SSD, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're using one that you've used in another system, then definitely go on Amazon for like 10 bucks. You can buy a SATA to USB 3.0 adapter, plug it into your computer and fully wipe the drive before you install it. So I just put the hard drive back in after wiping it. I actually used my MacBook to wipe it. That way I know it's actually formatted as a Mac OS drive. So we're going to see if it'll actually boot from the flash drive now because it doesn't have that Windows partition to fall back on. I am holding Command Option R as fallback. Oh, here we go. Go to Mac OS logo, that's a good thing. So this should be booting from the flash drive. Sweet, so we've got this hooked up. This is the um, installation software, so that's good. Um, we'll be able to check the keyboard, see if the keyboard's connected in a minute. I do have a Windows keyboard connected um, as well, USB as well, okay. So we can see this is the USB flash drive here. This is our actual hard drive. So we should be good to install it. So it says 12 minutes remaining. Uh, we're gonna do that. And then I'll do the Mojave and Catalina ones once we actually have an operating system fully installed on this computer. So it just said that it's done with the installation. So it's gonna restart and we're gonna have the boot menu. I've got it booted up. I've got her an account. So we can see here it's the 2009. I got it running High Sierra. Um, it didn't want to recognize the Mojave boot drive, but honestly, that's fine. High Sierra, it's only a couple of generations or a couple of editions back. It's still really capable, and everything requires Sierra or later for the most part. Uh, we've got 12 gigs of RAM. That so that's the 8i installed plus the four that was already there, 
and if you don't believe me, boom, memory right there. Two, two of the two gig sticks and two of the four gig sticks. So this is honestly, and it's so freaking smooth right now. Like, just looking at it, it's not signed into iCloud, but everything is just so smooth. I mean, even just watching like a window drag around, like, look at this, it's so freaking smooth. Okay, hey guys, so it's the next day. We are gonna go to Market Basket because I need to get some batteries for the mouse and the keyboard. And Market Basket's the cheapest place to buy them because I can buy store brand batteries for a dollar. So uh, we're gonna go. I'm not gonna record while driving, obviously, but let's go get batteries. So on the Magic Mouse, this is the older style, so it's not the lightning one. You just push this little black piece on the bottom inwards and the bottom piece just pops up and lifts off. And we can put in our batteries with the negative, so the flat side facing towards the bottom of the mouse. And just in like that, and we just, the back cover just snaps right back on. And now for the keyboard, this one's different. So uh, we have to use a flat tip something, so I'm just gonna use the screwdriver on my multi-tool. And right over here on the edge, we see this little slot, so we gotta twist it to the left. It works a lot like the battery compartment on a watch does, in that you have to twist it off, and then the batteries, come out. I do have a couple of Duracell batteries in here. I put these in here last night. They're from my remote for my old remote from the TV, but I need that remote. So we're going to put these in. And in case you're wondering, which, oh, which direction do they go in? On the bottom here, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it shows the way to put them in, which is with the positive side. So the side with the little point inwards. So we're just going to do that real quick. Pop them in. And we're gonna twist this back down to lock it down. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know you guys tend to like the repair and walkthrough and guide videos. So drop a like on this video if you liked it. Uh, click up here to subscribe and up here to watch one of my last videos. I've got a couple more videos planned soon, including an update to the Mac OS on Linux video. So until then guys, peace.